Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everyone Loves Languages. I am your host today. My name is Alex, and what we are going to be doing, we are going to be unpacking our adjectives, all right? We are going to start out with what is an adjective. Then we're going to break it down into how to describe people, food, inside and outside. We're going to focus on those four ideas today. Then we're going to do some adjective matching where you'll get to see some more of my fabulous artwork. And then we've got our adjective video, which is super fun and my favorite of the Schoolhouse Rock variety. So, what we are going to start out with today, let's start out with, what is an adjective? An adjective is a word that describes or modifies a noun. Really just focus on that describes piece. So, if we're describing Alex, that's me, you would say she's tall, she's wearing blue, she's blonde, blue eyes, fair skin, red nails. All right. That's how you would describe me, pretty much. So it's things that describe a noun. I'm a person. Things that describe a noun. We got it. All right. Now, some of the more common ones, common adjectives, include things like colors or words like big, small, hot, cold, hard, and soft. Just examples, because now we're going to use this definition or definition to describe these things that Alex drew. All right, so up here we've got a spider. Now I would say, if this was the actual size of the spider, it's a big spider, right? However, we all know spiders are usually small, tiny, um, it's black, remember we're using a color, colors always help describe things, gross, ooh, let's put some hair on its legs, a little hair. Little hair, 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 little hair. Little hair. So, it's also hairy blood. So, our description of this not so itty bitty spider, because it's pretty big for you guys to be able to see it, but in the real world, spiders aren't this big unless they're tarantulas. But this doesn't look like a tarantula, it just looks like a normal spider. So, it's small and tiny, it's an itsy bitsy spider. And if you are not familiar with that nursery rhyme, we might have a lesson in some nursery rhymes, all right? It's black. Alex doesn't like spiders, so she says gross. Alex doesn't like most bugs, or any bugs, except for ladybugs. I do enjoy a ladybug, they're cute. Then, it's a hairy spider. Ah, ew. Okay. Now let's go over to teddy bear. Ooh, we also have to give him a bow tie. So I have a teddy bear from when I was first born. My sister gave it to me. And his name's Teddy. I know. I'm very creative. I'm very aware. And this is Teddy. Teddy says hi. All right. So, number one thing that he is, cute. Cute means something that's adorable, something that you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that cute little face. Oh, I just like cute. So, it's when you see a baby that's very um, adorable. Or if you see a little, um, pet, like a cat or a dog, and it's just 
it's not gorgeous. It's not um, beautiful. It's just, it's cute. En français, c'est mignon. All right. Then we'll say it's fluffy. Fluffy means that it has some fur to it and it's got fuzz on it. So it's, you can pet it and it's a little fluff. Okay? Soft. It means that when you touch it, it's not hard. Like my arm is hard because there's a bone there. But if I touch my shirt, my shirt's soft. It's the material. It's what it's made out of. Um, we're going to say fancy because of the bow tie. Bow ties are cool. I like a good bow tie. All righty. Then he's not ferocious. He's not scary. He's fun. All right. So what we said for Teddy is that He's cute, fluffy, soft, fancy, and fun. Now, let's go to Le Petit Chat, or the little cat. And we're going to say adorable. Cute. Has triangle ears. Black eyes. Long whiskers. Um, I think that's good for the cat. So, adorable, the entirety of the cat is adorable. Same thing with cute. Cute and adorable tend to mean the same thing. Then, has triangle ears. So look at these ears. Don't they look like little triangles to you? I'm not an artist, and I don't claim to be. There are black eyes. The kitty cat has black eyes long whiskers, okay? And what color fur does it have? It has white fur. See how the skin or the fur is white? All right. Now, let's go into humans or stick figures. Woo! So, what we've got here, First guy, short. Second guy is tall. Both are thin. That's pretty much all you can really say about them. Short, tall, thin. That's all they got going on. Except if I went like this. Then I could say he is hefty or large. I don't like the word fat. You could say fat. I don't know if I would agree with it, but fat is spelled like this. F-A-T. All right. So what I want you to do, we are now going to practice doing some sentences. Pick one of the groups that I drew. You can pick the spider, the teddy bear, the kitty cat, or the tall and short, thin, hefty man, and write some sentences about them. So for example, if I were to pick the tall, short, thin, hefty man, I would say the tall man, is nice. 
The tall man is next. All right, and then I could write the short man needs a nope. Sorry. Needs a ladder. All right, the tall man, the short man, notice where I put the um, adjectives because what are they describing? They're describing the noun of man. Describing the noun of man. I want you guys to try this, okay? You're gonna work on this for 30 seconds. You're gonna pause it, and you're gonna write me three-ish sentences, okay? Get after it, you got it. I'll be right with you in 30 seconds. Pause. All right, I hope everybody did a great job on their sentences. Now what we're going to do is learn how to describe people, food, inside and outside. Of course, we're going quick. We're not gonna go through every way of describing something. There are um, so many different ways of describing things. So we're gonna do some of the basics and see how that goes. What we are gonna do over here we're gonna describe people, okay? So what I'm gonna start us out with is hair. So over here, over here we have curly hair. Over here we have straight hair. This is also straight. And now this could be bald, having no hair, or buzzed, which is when the barber takes a mechanical razor and has a special setting that can buzz hair off and leave a little bit of us like speckly hair. All right. So then you can also have long hair or short hair. Hair comes in a lot of shapes and sizes. It's a great way of describing a person. Right now, Alex's hair, it's relatively, it's long, but it's in a ponytail, so we really can't tell. And there's a little curly action to it. So is it curly or is it straight? Depending on who you ask, they could say different things. So, now, and there are many different types of hair. Many different types of hair. Basic, I am going over basic hair, basic ways of describing people, okay? So please do not be offended if you, the way that your hair is is not mentioned right now. I'm just trying to do the most basic form of ways to describe people's hair and adjectives as possible to make it easy and simple so you can continue to build off of it. Alrighty, to continue. So, over here, we've gone over this a little bit. So we've got... He's a man who is normal height, and he is a little bit larger in the stomach. So there's ways of talking about this. Um, some people would call him plus size. Some people would call him fat. Okay, it just depends on who you are. For me, I would just say that he's a larger gentleman. He's a, he's a bigger guy, okay? There's a lot of negative connotations that go along with plus size, and there's a lot of negative connotations that go along with being fat. A lot of people don't like being called this. A lot of people don't like being called this. I would say calling them a larger person. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You're not saying that it's a good thing. You're not saying it's a bad thing, because it's really for that person to decide not the person who is describing them. Then, this person is thin, small, okay? That's really all there is to this guy right here. He's thin, he's small, nothing special. Then, over here, you have the tall and the short. If there's someone in between, they would be called average. So if there was someone right here, they would just be an average type of person. Alrighty, so. 
main things that I want us to remember for describing people. Usually, you don't really describe somebody's skin texture. You don't say, oh, that person has really bumpy skin. Unless, like, you want to say some things about that person's skin, which I wouldn't. Um, you can describe someone by their eye color. There are many different eye colors. So, you could do, you could say that they have blue eyes. Brown eyes. Beautiful brown eyes. Green. Gorgia. Green eyes. Um, some people have gray eyes. Some people have hazel eyes. If you are familiar with Kelly Clarkson, she has a whole song that's called Behind These Hazel Eyes. So, you know, check that out. Then, you can also describe people by accessories. I have an A necklace. My nails are red. I have an Apple Watch that I tell most people, my so little soccer players, it keeps me from turning into an alien. It's really cute when they believe me. Um, I also have my Tredefrin Public Library lanyard, and I have a little owl on that lanyard. So you can describe people by the things that they are also wearing. Um, let's think. Anything else for people that I want you guys to know? Just remember, eye color is really important for discussing somebody if you're talking about, like, oh, they have beautiful eyes. What color are their eyes? Their eyes are blue. That will be something important. All right. Then, let's move in to food. So, I only drew one picture for food because we're going to talk a little bit more about food and different things that you can say about it, um, depending on if you are happy with the food or if you're unhappy with the food. So the main important thing is I made some eggs. They're sunny side up. The yolk is a little black, so please beware. Um, and there's steam coming off. So there's steam coming off of the eggs. So that would mean these eggs are hot. Okay, that means if you cut them up and put them in your mouth, you could burn your tongue. Okay? Then over here, these eggs will be Cold. All right. Then, if they're yummy, you would you could say the eggs are really yummy, or that means the same thing as delicious. Or if they're not good, you could say they are gross, and that would be tastes bad. It's yummy, it's delicious, it's gross, it tastes bad. Um, other things, other ways to describe food. You can describe food by the color of the food. The consistency. Meaning, for an egg, it's kind of, when you're eating eggs, they're a little slimy. The consistency would be slimy. You might not like that texture or consistency. You can also do texture. Texture is like kind of how it feels on your tongue. Okay, so for example, if you had oatmeal and you didn't put enough milk, water, whatever you put in your oatmeal to make your oatmeal, and you didn't put enough in, it would be very dry. Your oatmeal would be dry. So you could say, oh, this oatmeal tastes really dry. I don't like the texture. I didn't put enough water in it. Okay? So that's how you would describe food. There's tons of ways how to describe food. But I'm just giving you the basics so that you're able to understand some different ways and different verbal vocabulary. Goodness, I'm just stammering today. I apologize. Um, different vocabulary to use for when you're describing food. Um, you can also describe it by the smell. And that would either be like something smells floral, like flowers, or it smells um, fresh. 
or it smells rotten. That should be an E, rotten. You can also describe something by how it's cooked, if it's cooked enough or if it's not cooked enough. So you could say that something is raw or undercooked. So sushi is supposed to be raw, but your steak, unless you're eating steak tartare, which, oh my gosh, please, oh, you day. Um, instead, what you can do is, you would say to the person who is cooking your steak, if it's raw, sir, this is a little undercooked. I would prefer it to be medium. That's how I like it. Or, well done, that's how my dad likes it. And I know this isn't a food class, but you know, it's always fun to talk about food, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's get into inside and outside. Because there's a lot of things that you can describe inside and outside. So, when you're describing a house, is it a big house? Is it a small house? Is it a weirdly shaped house? I mean, it could be a very strange shape. I don't know where you're living. I don't know your life. So, you got a house. Inside the house, how many rooms are there? How many bathrooms are there? Do they have a basement? These are the things that you would be able to describe a house. A lot of the time, realtors say it's a three bedroom, four bathroom. Okay, that's just an example. It could be a two bedroom, one bathroom. It just depends on what is in the house. And that's how they really describe it. They also use to describe it math using square footage. And that's just telling you the size of the type of house you're looking at. But then if you're living in the house, is it clean? Is it dirty? Those are also ways to describe a house. Is it organized? Is it disorganized? I'm gonna write these down. Clean or dirty. Okay. Then, if you're outside, is it sunny? Is the sun out? Is it warm? Is it cold? All right, what does it feel like when you're out there? Is it raining? Are you wet from the rain? So many things can go on if you go outside. Is it windy? Do you feel the wind just running through you? Are there bugs outside? Is it buggy? So, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to make three sentences. You can make more. I'd love it if you made more. And I bet your English language learning acquisition would love it if you made more. But I need you to make a sentence for describing a person, a type of food, and inside and outside. So let's make it four sentences. You'll describe inside and outside, food, and people. All right, I'm gonna give you one minute, okay? You may pause me, because I'm going to continue on. You guys got this. One minute, four sentences, and you're on. All righty, I hope everybody's sentences went well. Now we're gonna put you guys to the test a little bit. So these are some of the adjective matching that I've got set up for you. I drew this, 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 and this. I'm not going to describe to you what I drew because you're going to match it to tall, straight hair, warm slash sunny, wet and rainy. Wet and rainy. And I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds. Go. Alrighty, I hope that you guys were able to do it. Okay, so tall, 
tall. Okay, this little guy is short. He's teeny tiny. He's a small one. All right, then straight hair. Go in here. Warm and sunny. I drew you guys a little sun. Wet and rainy. All right. If you did not have those as your answers, please make those corrections on your papers. And what I'm going to ask you all to do is in this next video we're going to watch, I'm going to ask that you write down as many adjectives as you can find in the video and or if it's going too fast for you, just tally every time you hear a, an adjective. All right? So, I'm going to do a quick screen share, and let's make this big, and let's talk about some adjectives. It's great to learn. Because knowledge is power. It's so it's to begin our show, unpack your adjectives. Got home from camping last spring Saw people, places, and things We barely had arrived Friends asked us to describe The people, places, and every last thing So we unpacked our adjectives I unpacked frustrating first Reached in and found the word worst Then I picked soggy and Next I picked foggy and Then I was ready to tell them my tale Cause I'd unpacked my adjectives Adjectives are words you use to really describe things Handy words to carry around Days are sunny or they're rainy Boys are dumb or else they're brainy Adjectives can show you which way Adjectives are often used to help us compare things To say how thin, how fat, how short, how tall Girls who are tall get taller Boys who are small can get smaller Till one is the tallest and another is the smallest of all we hiked along without care Then we ran into a bear He was a hairy bear He was a scary bear We beat a hasty retreat from his lair And described him with adjectives Oh, that was one big ugly bear you can even make adjectives out of the other parts of speech, like verbs or nouns. All you have to do is tack on an ending, like ick, or ish, or airy. For example, this boy can grow up to be a huge man, but still have a boyish face. Boy is a noun, but the ending ish makes it an adjective. Boyish. That describes the huge man's face. Get it? Next time you go on a trip, Remember this little tip The minute you get back They'll ask you this and that You can describe people, places and things Simply unpack your adjectives You can do it with adjectives Tell them about it with adjectives You can shout it with adjectives all righty, so let's stop that screen share and we're back. Okay, so I hope that you guys all learned something really great about adjectives. I hope it helped you and I hope that you're able to use them when you describe things from the point of after you watch this. So make good choices, have a lot of fun, and remember to unpack those adjectives. All righty, have a good one. Bye-bye. Oh, and everyone loves languages. Don't forget.